Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Conrad Benner. I'm not only the curator of To The Polls 2020, I curated the 2018 iteration as well. Uh, and I run a blog here in Philadelphia called Streets Department that highlights and celebrates art on the streets of Philadelphia. And I've been doing that since 2011, so almost 10 years now. Uh, and tonight we'll be talking with seven of our participating To The Polls 2020 artists including some of our artists who have never created uh, or who created their largest work to date for this project um, or their first mural. So if you're an artist watching, that might be interesting conversations to hear we're, that we're about to have um, with these artists about the challenges they had in creating their first sort of public mural. We're also gonna talk about voting, why we're voting, and why we think this project is important, um, what we hope people get from it, and why we think creating messages like this for the public space um, are important and valuable to a city. Um, and you know, one thing I'm particularly excited about talking about is all of these artists came from a really personal space um, when thinking about concepting their mural and then creating it. Um, but they all speak to many, many, many people. So I'm curious to hear from them how they take a concept that's personal and make it into something that can be um, taken and celebrated and thought about by many more people. Um, we're going to talk for about 45 minutes. We got a bit of a late start. We might go over a bit um, if we need to, because I think this conversation is really important. Um, but we're going to end with about 15 minutes of Q&A. So if you have questions, kind of make a note of them or think about them, and we'll, we'll get to that at the end. Before we start, though, I have to thank our three partners. Um, Mural Arts Philadelphia, of course, been around for 35 years, creating, you know, they're the reason why we have, we are the Mural Arts Capital of America, of the United States. Um, Love Park, of course. Um, arguably one of Philadelphia's most famous parks. We have the Love Statue there, and they do great programming as well, including Christmas Village, which will be coming up really soon. So tune in with them to figure more, to hear more about that. And WHYY, um, our media partner, who is the leading public media organization in the Philadelphia region, including Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and beyond. You can access WHYY on television, radio, and in the community, right and right here and online. Um, You've heard enough of me, let's hear from the artists. So um, before we get into some questions, let's introduce you to the artists and I'll have them each do that. And we can start with uh, Candy. Hi, my name is Candy Alexandra Gonzalez. I am a multidisciplinary visual artist and trauma-informed educator based in West Philly. Um, my training is in book arts, printmaking, and papermaking, and since graduating from UArts with my MFA, I uh, picked up photography and poetry as well, so a little all over the place. Um, my work currently centers self-reconciliation themes and um, self-healing. And then we'll go to Danae. Hello. My name is Danae Harrison. I'm an award-winning interdisciplinary artist from Philly. I uh, graduated from Penn State in 2014. And since then, I've just been dedicated to showing my work uh, in Philadelphia and New York. Uh, currently, I'm working on some music projects. Uh, music is my, my, one of my primary mediums, as well as oil painting. And uh, yeah, I'm also trying to get a 501c3 off the ground eventually. Um, and really, you know, keep dedicating myself to the arts initiatives in public spaces. Awesome. And Hysterical Men, who is uh, joining us anonymously. Hi. Yeah, I'm a street artist in Philadelphia known as Hysterical Men. And my work centers around turning negative stereotypes of women around on particular men who embody them more accurately. And I've also done work condemning family separation and in defense of reproductive rights. And lately, I've been trying to get out the vote. Uh, let's hear from Ka. Hey, um, I'm Ka. I'm a 29-year-old self-taught illustrator muralist living here in West. Um, all of my work usually has to do with justice or joy or queerness. And um, yeah, I just love making stuff that has to do with like my values in the world that I hope to see, I think. Murals especially are like a really cool way to like make that world real and in public. So thank you. Yeah, uh, BK. Hello everybody. My name is Khalid Dennis. My artist name is BKL Visions. Uh, born and raised in Philadelphia. Uh, my art style is based around uh, graffiti, abstract. Um, my artwork speaks around 
anti-violence, um, equality, uh, love, um, just promoting positivity, positivity in the community um, and just to the world. So I just hope my artwork touches people's hearts. Uh, Nathaniel. Hey everyone. Uh, my name is Nathaniel Lee. I'm a staff artist with Mural Arts Philadelphia. I've been with the Mural Arts program for about 13 years now, um, full-time uh, painting murals with them. And then Sam. Hey guys, good evening. My name is Sam Rodriguez. I'm 30 years old, Philadelphia native. I'm a teaching artist for the Mural Arts program. We have an art education department in which we serve more than 2,000 youth year round. And I have the honor to be representing my class, the Entrepreneurs, which is a business and art program which uses, um, which uses art as a platform to teach students project-based learning, which you'll hear about later. Thank you. Awesome. And for those watching, um, you know, we have seven artists. This is a big panel. So to make this as easy and as um, impactful as a talk as possible, uh, we're taking a slightly different approach than a normal panel where we might go around and have everyone talk um, on different topics. We're going to kind of go artist by artist um, in this talk. Uh, so I hope you stick around. And we're going to start with Candy. Um, Candy, let's talk about your mural. Um, I know that it's an altar, if that's correct. And let's talk about why creating an altar was important for you uh, and why remembering people from the past who fought for our voting rights uh, was something you thought would be valuable to bring to this project. Um, so yes, let's start there. Yeah, so um, my mural is an altar dedicated to people of color, organizers and activists who made it possible for someone like me to vote. And I just wanna throw their names out there and hold space for them. Um, so their names are Ida B. Wells, Mary Church, Williams Clifford, Nina Otero Warren, Mabel Ping Huali, Marie Louise Botino, Miguel Trujillo, Amzi Moore, Medgar Evers, and Al Perez. And each of these folks really spent a significant part of their life mobilizing in order to dismantle border suppression. And we have a long way to go, but for me, it was really important to recognize just how far we've come uh, in this work and, uh, and to honor the folks who got us here, right? Um, so I really, I chose to go in this direction for a couple of reasons. First of all, altars are deeply personal and spiritual practice for me and cultural practice. They show up in my work time and time again. And uh, for my family, you know, it's how we express gratitude and um, how we remain connected to our ancestors and the deities that look out for us, especially coming from a family of immigrants. Um, and, and secondly, you know, the Day of the Dead, um, El Dia de los Muertos is literally right, you know, right before election day. And so while it is a day of remembrance, um, it is also an invitation. So through this altar, I really wanted to invite what I call our voting rights ancestors uh, to join us into this world of the living. So yes, I'm honoring our voting rights ancestors, but I'm also inviting them to join us and be with us and be in community and to share their light with us and help us move to like through November 3rd, which I know that we're all kind of um, anticipating with maybe some fear, maybe some anxiety, something that's been looming for quite a, a bit. And I felt that more than ever, like we needed their energy now. And for me, it really, like having an altar practice has been a way to stay hopeful, to stay grounded, to stay connected. And, you know, right now, so many voters, especially younger voters, are so disillusioned. Uh, we're feeling so weary and rightfully so, right? It feels like the world is trash fire right now. And, you know, as a trauma-informed educator, I know, I understand that as because we're so stressed, because we are impacted by trauma uh, collectively, it's hard for us to think ahead and, you know, and it's hard for us to think back and and to put things into perspective like when you are experiencing stress like that's something that doesn't come easily so you know at the same time i want this altar to be a reminder to folks that there have been people who've been doing this work for such a long time right 
and that it a reminder that yes it's still trash fire but you know the work is going to continue long after us and that we are a part of that uh journey so so that's a little bit of why why it was so important for me to have alters be a part of this yeah and and candy talk to us about your um i think the only artists who had like a 3d element so you have flowers that go around the mural and correct me if i'm wrong but this is one of your one of your largest works today and um your first mural in the public space so talk about the challenge any challenges you had in sort of figuring out how to do this um and how to get it done because it's incredible thank you yeah so it was definitely an adventure um i i do love working a, a bit on a larger scale i think some of my earlier work which you know i don't show ever anymore tended to be very sculptural and you know larger skill than what I make now. Um, and that's just because with paper, especially paper making, it's only so big that you can get. Um, that being said, yeah, like I wanted to incorporate those 3D elements. I wanted, I love it when my work has a lot of texture and it feels very tactile and it's inviting in that way. So it was my first time doing something like that. Um, not just the mural, but in terms of incorporating handmade paper flowers, you know, in, in a public space. And so figuring that out was absolutely a challenge because it's been rainy as y'all yeah. know these past few days intermittently. And so figuring out the materials and making sure that it wouldn't disintegrate was a big part of that. Um, working large scale was so much fun. I think the tricky part is getting into the rhythm of it. You know, yeah. um, when I'm in the studio, it's, I've already nailed that down for paper making and other my other practices, but this was really just like a getting to know the craft and like, you know, getting developing that that rhythm and also working at the love park that was so busy and having to balance, you know, uh, the generator going down while folks, you know, were trying to engage was definitely a, a balancing act and and in that moment, I was grateful that I've been a server in the past because I, I was able to do that somewhat naturally. <laughs> yeah, I do. I would love to um, and maybe end this conversation with some, you know, there were a lot of people there every day. People were getting married some days and other folks were mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, so we can sort of end this talk with maybe conversations we had while we were on site. But um, to keep it moving, let's move on to BK who in a similar vein, your mur in a similar vein to Candy's, your mural asked us to think about those um, who can't breathe anymore. It's a reference yes. obviously to the current protest chants um, from the Black Lives Matter movement, but also for the generations and generations of folks who fought to expand our voting rights here in the US. Yes. Um, and from what I remember, you, you got the email back very quickly about what your idea was, why you chose those words. It was so, immediate for you. So talk to us about what this mural means to you and, and why, it, how that idea came to you so quickly. Um, to be honest, uh, the idea actually came from um, just being around the house around my wife and she's really heavy into, you know, social justice and things like that. So when, when you sent me the email, the first, you know, I'm always thinking like words and how to project words to people that mean something. Um, so the idea kind of came very fast because, you know, me and my wife always having these social injustice conversations at home. So um, I was, I just been touched by George Floyd, um, by Breonna Taylor, um, Jacob Blake, um, those kind of people, even Philadelphia natives like, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, I, I, I forget his name. I think it's David Jones, I believe. Mm. David Jones. Um, kind of hit home. I, I actually knew him. He lived in the same neighborhood as me. Um, it's just a touchy subject. So, you know, the, the words vote for those who can't breathe anymore just, you know, touch me in a way where I know it would bring awareness to people and it would strike, it, you know, provoke thought um, about how African Americans and other minorities are being treated um, by police brutality and just the laws. Um, a lot of the laws are, are just unfair for humans. So, um, the words vote for those who can't breathe anymore just, just touched me and I, I wanted to bring a light to it. 
And can we talk about how you chose to stack these words? As you were painting, my eyes were just glued because you started with vote can't breathe and I thought, wait, didn't it say more than that? And then you included the other words sort of as boxes over them. Um, what was the choice in how you stacked it? And in your color choice, why the yellow background? Why the red, white, and blue, but then the peace signs like a lighter blue? Talk to us about the color, the color choices and the stacking of the words. Yes, um, the yellow was actually done on purpose. Um, in my creative thought process, I had to think of a background color that was going to catch, you know, the human eye, especially like, you know, people's peripheral vision. Um, I'm just like, you know, yellow is perfect for the peripheral vision. You have, you have no choice but that even if you're not paying attention, you're looking down at your phone, you're going to see the yellow out of your peripheral. Um, so I chose yellow for the background. Uh, the red, white, and blue is also on purpose um, just because I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, America is just supposed to be the land of the free, the home of the brave, but it never feels like that. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I guess you could say a punch in the gut to America is just like, these are our colors, this is our country that we're supposed to represent. It's supposed to be land of the free, home of the brave, but you know, us as minorities, as African Americans, as a black man um, in America, uh, we, we don't feel free. We don't feel free, you know, even me as a, as a black male, um, I could walk out the house any day and I'm a loving person. I'm a loving father. I'm a loving, you know, friend, brother, uncle, whatever, grandfather. Um, I, I love people. You know, people belong to God. So to to have to have that target on my back every day as a black male, it's hard. It's hard. So I just wanted for people to see, like, yeah, this this is supposed to be America. This is where people are supposed to live free and be happy and and, and feel love. You know, so that that was on purpose too. Um, the peace sign blue. You know, blue is just a common color, um, you know, as far as emotion. Um, so it, it represents peace. It represents, you know, just unity um, and just calmness. You know, mm -hmm. even through all the madness of the world, it represents still having love, still showing love, still being calm, even even through these. Just, you know, you know or get mad and jump out the box. But we, we still have to be smart and we still have to love. So um, I just wanted to use my artwork to provoke, provoke thought, but make people think about the people who actually can't vote and why they can't vote, which is because they were killed. Yeah. Um, and Hysterical Men, if we move over to you, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but your mural seems to also reference the current uh, protest movement with its imagery, um, as well as use the word essential, a word we've been hearing a lot since the start of COVID. Um, so it seems to me like your mural is also really deeply inspired by the last nine months or so. Um, so talk to us about how you approach the concept of your mural. Um, yeah, how did, you, how did you approach this concept? Because if, if I remember correctly, it took a, a while for you to find like that exact verbiage. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. talk to us. Sure, yeah. Um, well, just regarding the content, um, it's definitely inspired by many protests um, and vigils that I've been to. And this summer, like so many others, I took part in the protests that happened in the wake of uh, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor's murders by police officers. And um, as always, I was just so inspired by the dignity and the like collective power, hope, um, and the courage displayed in the face of um, appallingly excessive force. So I just really wanted to express that love for my community and my city, Philadelphia, and that sense of solidarity and dignity that I took from the protests. Um, so much of my past work has been fueled by anger and women's right to be angry, but um, you know, with the pandemic and the uprising, the more I grapple with all the work we have to do in uh, like fighting to make our world better and more just, um, the more I'm just learning from, you know, my, my community and those who've gone before me, um, just that the things that are going to keep us, keep me in the fight for the long haul and for lifetimes of work are things like hope, uh, joy, collective care, community care, collective action. Um, and, and you're right, it, it was, I know you were uh, consulting me on the, the wording and I got a lot of different opinions because it really was important to me that I, mm. I get the wording right and strike the right tone. Um, 
And so, you know, we're also aware of that word essential right now. Um, and I've just been thinking about how it seems to have effectively kind of come to mean something that we like absolutely require to exist as a society, but something or someone we completely take for granted and treat as if they have little to no value. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're in a pandemic, we're all going through, um, like Candy said, this traumatic experience right now. And um, it, you know, it disproportionately affects black and brown communities and the poor and women especially who intersect with those other categories. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge like the solemnity and the fear and the harm as well um, that so many are feeling. And, um, you know, at the same time, we're in the middle of an uprising and uh, we're demanding the fulfillment of the promise our country made us, uh, liberty and justice for all. And black women are leading that movement. So I wanted to center them in terms of the people I depicted. Um, and then just in terms of uh, the size, yeah, it's my largest public um, work, my largest work ever, honestly. And that was such an exciting challenge for me. Um, and also, uh, I had other challenges. I'm the mother of a young child. And like so many, parenting during a pandemic has been challenging. Um, and time is a, a scarce quantity. Um, you know, I'm sure you saw in the news that almost 80% of the 1 million people who dropped out of the workforce last month were women. So 865,000. Um, so I did just want to acknowledge you, Conrad, as well as Mural Arts um, for approving my concept early. And you guys really made it possible for me to start my mural on paper. I think it was two months early. So I just kind of chipped away at it. And um, because of those allowances, my voice could still be heard. Yeah, you, you know, had that consideration. Um, not only are you anonymous, you didn't want to paint live, but yeah, you mm -hmm. are, are raising a child. So it made sense. Um, and you're, you're used to working with wheat paste. So it seemed to be a natural. Yeah, it's my comfort zone. Um, and then let's move on uh, to Danae. Uh, Danae, I remember when you first sent me your mural concept uh, and I mentioned uh, the date looked like lottery balls. Uh, and mm -hmm. how people look celebratory. And for me, as someone who's worked for years in the get out the vote effort, um, it just made me smile and think, yeah, let's remind folks that this, it's a great thing to participate civically. It's a great thing to participate voting in voting. Um, and so talk to us about how you arrived at this mural concept, um, why you chose to create a mural that is celebratory, or at least that's how I'm interpreting it. Maybe I'm interpreting it wrong. Um, and also I'd love to hear more about like the color choice of the flag, because um, I know that was an important choice for you. Um, yeah, talk to us. This is my first nonpartisan project. Um, so I, I really struggled with uh, creating something that wasn't super critical. Um, and I knew that it was gonna be a public project with numerous eyes you know people i don't know who is going to see this mural so i wanted to make something that could be more so inclusive um you know for everyone because i honestly the way i feel is like i i'm geared more towards like focusing on the equality like we want equality right so make something that everyone can relate to you know i didn't want it i didn't honestly i didn't want to make something that sweet one way or the other so i kept it kind of ambiguous so the fact that you see celebratory in the mural is great you know so, um, um i've seen it. but the energy overall is like super positive so i wanted to run with that you know um all the color choices in the flag are intentional i wanted to make a more so multicultural abstraction um opposed to the you know traditional red white and blue flag because I just don't feel like you know that you know I didn't feel like that was the energy I really wanted to put into this piece I wanted people to see it and feel some type of way about it and that's honestly been the response that 
I've been getting, um, you know, when I was out there painting and a lot of people came up to me and they were just like, I just love what you did with the flag, you know, and it was a lot of brown people, you know, multicultural people and everybody from different ethnicities that really felt somewhere about it. So um, that was really my intention just to get folks to, to see it, not be able to ignore it and to feel some type of way about it. And to also, you know, be aware of the voting, you know, the voting rights, like the election day is coming up. So that's why I put the date in it. I felt like the event was very prominent. I mean, that's what the whole project is about. So I wanted to be very direct and you know what I was saying. So I put vote in and I put the date. So um, yeah, that was, that's pretty much like the basis and, of it. And with the flag specifically, you were painting it with your, um, I know we were having really interesting conversations with your friend who was painting it with you, who um, is also mm -hmm. a vet, a United States yes. vet. Um, mm -hmm. And I, if I remember correctly, like it was, it was really important for him that you included the flag, but also um, in kind of skewing the colors to make it more um, multicultural. Um, he loved that too. Yeah, he did. And uh, it's funny because we, we are like childhood friends. You know, I've known him since I, we also have very different, view, very different views sometimes about things. And, you know, for him as a vet, he loves like the flag, like he, you know, he salutes it, he stands by it. And, you know, me as like that free spirited rebel artist, you know, I kind of look at the flag as oppression. So I didn't want to put the red, white, and blue, you know? So it, I felt like the, the fact that we could work on this project together and let the art join us, you know, and come together for this goal with the different views says it all, you know? So he, he obviously understood the importance of voting and, you know, the message so he was able to put his views aside um you know as far as the flag and the way it's represented to help me you know create that get to the goal uh technically speaking am i right this was the first time you projected uh the mural when you created it um was that yeah. a challenging process for you i know i was there at the beginning so i know it was a whole new world for all of us but talk mm -hmm. to us about that, the challenges of that like pr projecting this that's how you got up that's how most of the artists uh, started their mural with mm -hmm. projection. Yeah, well, anyone that was out there that first day, they know. Whew, I was I was running back and forth because uh, I didn't have the, uh, the the setup quite nailed down since it is my first you know mural outside um, alone, and I'm used to working with the team. You know, I was in the mural arts program as a youth, and I was in an internship in college, so I'm used to doing it a certain way, and I didn't really have like the team that I'm used to. So I, I pulled from what I knew about, you know, the process and how mural arts does the murals. And I, I just ran with it, even though I had to run back and forth like a thousand times, you know, to get everything I needed. Cause I just, I just, it was, it's a learn as you go type of process sometimes. And for this being my first public mural, you know, that I did, that I'm the lead artist of, it was just a, a real learning experience. And, um, you know, I think that, for the amount of obstacles that came up, it, it doesn't really show at all, you know? So I'm, I'm really happy about the outcome. And um, I just want people out there to know too, like there are, there are going to be some obstacles in anything, you know? So you have to just keep moving forward and keep pushing forward, you know? Like that was a very frustrating moment. And for it to be the first day and, you know, I just met you and everyone else on the spot like that, it was like a lot of pressure. And I'm like, oh, I don't want people to think that you know, I can't do it, but you know, we got it done. So just, it was just a learning experience. Yeah. And Candy helped and Simone Salib was there, another great Philly yes, artist. Definitely. Um, yes. And we also pulled together and figured it out. I mean, it did take a minute, but um, that's <laughs> art, you know, that's art making. You, you mm -hmm. can't control everything. And it was just, right. I'm glad we figured it out. Um, if we move on to Ka, I know you had a very, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you had a very specific person in mind when you were thinking about your mural concept. Um, it took you a minute to get there, um, but ultimately your mural speaks to um, a person who maybe some of the other murals don't speak to, and that's maybe the non-voter. Um, so talk to us about the words in your mural, talk to us about arriving at that concept and who are you talking to with, with your mural? Um, yeah, with my mural, I, it's like I vote to protect the people that I love. Um, and I thought of it because I'm in a, like, I'm in a social world where like, 
I'm surrounded by a lot of people, I think, uh, kind of similar to what Candy said, like younger idealists who like really, really, really care about the world and the people in it and are trying the best way that they can to like make the world a better place who are really disillusioned by the process and by maybe some of the like the people that we have as options at this point. Um, and I think that it's been, yeah, I think all of us are like tired and a little like disillusioned by like stuff that uh, you see like some of the candidates saying and it can it can really bring you down. Like things related to the person, the ugliness and like the anger and the cutting people off that you see in like the debates, it, it can be hard. So I felt like I needed something like I need to do something that was hopeful and brought voting back to what I think is important, which is about, like, I think voting is about not just being really angry at a particular candidate or really mad about what's happening, but also about like who you love, like who you really care about. So for me, I'm like, I care about my parents who are immigrants. Like I care about my really great grand Mila who is on a visa. Like these are like, when I think about like who, I'm voting for, I feel like hot and angry and not good when I think about like what I'm upset about. But when I think about like what I love, it becomes so much more clear that I have to do it. And I know that there are a lot of people out there who maybe like they wouldn't vote, but when they think about who they love, like they, they would. And so I was like, I, I can speak to that. Like I can figure that out I can figure out the words and the color palette. And like once I had that like general idea, then I came up with like this concept. Yeah. And it doesn't, um, it dawns on me, it's dawning me right now, actually, that we're in Love Park and your mural might be the only mural that uses the word love in it. Um, maybe that was like, <laughs> <laughs> was that on purpose? No, no, <laughs> no. I thought it was funny. Yeah, I noticed um, that while I was working. And the way the murals are stacked, if no one's been out there yet, um, or if you haven't been out there yet, you have until election day to go out and see them. I encourage you to do so. But yours, you can see if you're waiting in line for the love statue, for the love monument, which lots of people are, every time we were there, there was a line to the corner. Um, yours is one of like the two murals, yours and Danae's, that people can see while they're waiting in line. Um, and we did that on purpose, right? I vote to protect the people I love and then the date as a reminder. Um, <clears throat> what, you know, all of the murals have been talked about a ton on social media. There's been, you know, and that's something I'm really grateful for as someone who's works really hard to promote these projects and get the word out. There's been a ton of press and a lot of love on social media. And Kyle, I think there's, what I've seen is a lot of people reacting very big heartedly to yours specifically and saying effectively like, oh, you know, this is, that's what I'm doing. That's my experience. That's why I'm doing it because maybe they feel a similar way. So talk to us about the re reaction you've seen, uh, the reaction you've heard in, you know, from friends, loved ones, or maybe on social media. Yeah, um, I definitely think there's like one post in particular, but there are a couple who are like this. But there's one that really struck me where this woman did this thing that sometimes happens with my art where like I'll have an idea and I put the words out there and I kind of have a fuzzy idea of like, yeah, like I wanna make something that's about voting to protect people that I love, but I'm not like, I haven't like written like a, a two paragraph like essay on like why that's important. And then somebody will just like hop in and they will totally write that essay. And there's like one woman who wrote this like really lit post that was like, when I vote, like we're told to vote our own interests. But like when I vote, like I'm not just voting for me, like I'm voting for people in the world who need my vote to be a certain way and I look out and I look at like what do poor people need like what do immigrants need like what do people that are in prison need and like go down the list and like vote in the interest of like not just myself and I saw a bunch of people write kind of similarly to that and I was like this is it like she totally got it and I yeah I was so I was so psyched to see that and I'm really yeah I love that people got it that it's like that that's that that's what it's about like changing the way we do politics to be about like protecting the group and protecting like all kinds of people that we care about and like making that our focus not just everything else uh and just to do a time check with everyone because we started about 10 minutes late i'm gonna go 15 minutes over if everyone's okay with that we're gonna talk 10 more for 10 more minutes with the artists nathaniel and sam and then we'll do 15 minutes at the end so hopefully if you stuck around this long you'll stick around uh for the for the end here um nathaniel 
Uh, let's talk about your mural because it was created in a special sort of capacity. You know, we're on WHYY right now, uh, and it was created for a partner, a media partner here at WHYY. Uh, and for me personally, it, it was exciting for me to have WHYY a part of this project because, you know, Info, news and information is so important, especially at the local level. Uh, and I've been a big supporter of WHY for a long time. So talk to us about your process, Nathaniel, um, about creating this mural. Um, you got the concept from WHY and myself. Um, so it's a bit of a different thing for you, but talk to us about how you created this mural. Yeah, um, I've done a bunch of social justice themed artwork uh, in a collaborative setting with my work with the mural arts program. So this was like a natural fit for me. And uh, collaborating with them, uh, we came up with the, the plan of highlighting the importance of real unbiased fact-based news uh, in regards to the election. And that was the theme and, uh, and how important that is to the, to the voters. Um, so these are actually headlines from WHYY. Uh, they're current, they're relevant, uh, you can Google them and get all this back information that is, uh, these are just the headlines of those stories. Um, so my artwork is literally uh, takes the ripped from the headlines theme <laughs> and I wheat pasted in these mural size uh, headline clippings uh, into my painted artwork. Um, the background is a, um, industrial paint sprayer, spray cans, uh, a roller, all to give different textures and energy to tie everything together. And the figure on the right is, um, she's a woman, uh, she's a, she represents all of Philadelphia. And uh, she is empowered with knowledge and she's wielding her official 2020 uh, mail-in ballot. And um, this uh, project, it really, for me, in order to get all this lettering in and to get all of it technically, I basically used uh, every skill, every artistic <laughs> skill, uh, in order to pull it all off um, that, you know, all the tools of the, all the tricks of the trade. <laughs> it looks so good. I, I'm looking at it right now on my screen and it really looks, it almost looks like a Photoshop image, but when you go out and see it in real life, it really looks like, you know, pieces of paper put up and put it right onto the mural. Um, why? I'm curious because, you know, as we just discussed, you worked with the concept that WHY and I created, which was to use the headlines, but then you created this, you decided to create this figure. So let's talk about the figure, why um, you chose to do an individual, why, why a figurative person, you know, why make it figurative at all, and then why is that person holding a vote by mail ballot? That, those are the decisions that you made. Yeah, um, it really was, um, when you see uh, a, a mural, a piece of image, uh, the just having a whole bunch of words as a collage uh, is powerful, but there's, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words and the portrait of a human, uh, someone you can relate to, someone that you can, you know, see as yourself up there, um, that, that um, grabs people's attention. It gives them something to look at visually. And then also, I didn't want to have people passing in traffic, not have the time to read all the text and not get the gist of my message. So I wanted to have a very clear, concise, uh, summed up message, just pictorially, you know, even an, an illiterate person could understand that she's holding her ballot high. Um, and then if you do have your attention grabbed by that image, then you will read the nitty gritty details and really get sucked into the important content, the subject matter of uh, those articles I'm referencing. Yeah. Uh, and Sam, let's move on to you. You have um, a big job on this panel discussion, so I thank you for being a part of it. Um, you are representing three walls that were created with a many, many, many artists, including two of the walls are rotating. Um, and yours, the structure that you're representing on this panel, the structure that, was, that you were in part of creating um, is meant to give voice to uh, folks who are disenfranchised, disenfranchised here in the US, those who can't vote, uh, but maybe would like to. So talk to us about your three walls. Hey, thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for all the other panelists and the opportunity to 
um, talk about the work of the students and the entrepreneur program. And what's really important um, before I get into the details of everything is to understand uh, that the art education program works with youth throughout the city. And particularly my class is called the entrepreneur students where a lot of the students are nearing the age out age of you know school they're getting ready to go to college and really think about um, life as an adult so knowing this as um, one of the teaching artists in the program um, my teaching partner whose name is Elena when we work our curriculum um, we have sort of freedom in which we can create our curriculum in and for the past two years we thought it was very important to focus on youth voting um, throughout the years, our students have been getting more older and have been demanding more of a need to help navigate kind of like their life and decisions throughout society. So what we see here is a beautiful partnership um, with the students and the teaching artists that we work with, along with Elena and myself. Um, so there's a lot of representation here. Um, on the left side, you can see all of the student work. Um, more so on the bottom side, we see figures of the past, a lot of uh, figures who made a difference, like Martin Luther King, Ida B. Wells, and through our, our curriculum over the past three years, we put a focus on the past, where students learned and created a timeline on the figures who made a difference, kind of how Candy referenced everyone who came before us, um, who allowed us to vote. Now this year, um, our project is focused with another artist called Aram C. Puente. And Aram is a Chicago-based artist who her focus is on reclaiming spaces for immigrants and of course, people who are defranchised. And quite frankly, the students fall under that category. A lot of our students are of age right now, but they can't vote because they either missed the deadline, they're 17, or they just have to wait another presidential election. But what we're going to see in this wall, um, in the middle of our wall, is an interaction, um, a downloadable zine that everyone can download. And you guys can interact and see all of the student work from the past years leading up to the day. And some of the things that are present there are a lot of their designs, which was in collaboration with another artist, local artist called Just Keebs, and her style was very graphic and, yes, yeah, a little bit about the program and everything that we mm. see at this wall. Yeah, that, you know, I remember being in high school and, and, you know, following politics and, like, having strong opinions about, you know, what was going on in the world, and I would have loved to vote at the age of 16. Um, one thing I learned from your wall, there's a lot of information, um, you know, you could spend a half hour just circling these walls, um, was the, the date that the Voting Rights Act, um, or, you know, voting rights were given to folks who are 18 years and older, which I didn't, I honestly, maybe I knew that in the back of my head, but it was refreshing to see uh, on this wall, to know that it wasn't that long ago that we pushed the voting age back to 18, and maybe, I'm sure some of the students that you work with uh, feel this way, maybe it could be pushed back to 16 even, you know, what is the right age? Um, where someone can make a sort of decision like that, that. Um, especially when, right, governments affect public schooling and, and there's all sorts of real life effects that the government we have has on uh, high school kids, right? Um, do you get that sense when you're talking to kids that they would love to vote, kids who are maybe 16, 17? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, the kids are, are ecstatic to see their artwork here not only for themselves, but to encourage other people who can't vote. Um, I'm telling you, the students are really eager, and if they could vote, they would go vote. And that needs to tell us something as adults. Um, for some of us who don't vote or, or simply can't vote, we need to do you know, a better job to go out there and do what we have to do, because if the students could vote, they would. And you know, what we're seeing is just their voice. Um, they want to make changes and they want to be a part of the decision making that's going on because it quite frankly affects them in their life and college and in the future. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, a 17 year old kid can sign a loan for, for how many thousands of dollars for college. Maybe, maybe they can also have the right to vote. Um, uh, well, Sam, I thank you for joining. And for those uh, watching, I encourage you to type in questions now. I'm gonna do one more sort of round robin with the artists um, and ask them why they're voting. Um, but type in your questions now. We just got a question from, or it wasn't a question, but we just got a question from someone from San Jose, California saying that they couldn't be here in Philadelphia for the exhibit, but they love this talk tonight. So thank you. Um, the name here is Local Color. Um, so let's do a round robin. Let's, I would just love to know from each of the artists, why isn't voting important to you? Um, and why did you say yes to this project? And we'll go in the same order we did when we did intro. So we'll start with Candy. Why is voting important to you? And why did you say yes to this project? Yeah, so I was raised in a mixed status community. And that's something that really defined who I am and just my politics. And for those of you who don't know, that means that some of us are citizens and some of us weren't. And so that was a big deal for me because I, as a kid, it, it was awful to watch how people in my community couldn't make decisions for themselves, right? And that way they would be severely impacted by the results of each election, but they couldn't actually, you know, go out and, and participate um, and, and vote. And so, and they would have wanted to, right? So... For me, as soon as I turned 18, I registered, I made sure that I got out there and it, and it was always something that I knew that I was, I wanted to do it and I wanted to encourage others to do since, since I was a kid, right? Just like spending all that time, like watching people in my community, people that I love, not be able to speak for themselves or not be able to, to cast that vote for themselves. Um, and, and knowing that there are so many people out there who like would never think of them, right? You know, like when I vote, I think of them. So I really cause um, Miro really resonated with me as well for that reason, because I, I see it as a, as a protective thing, you know? Um, and, and I hope that, yeah, like when others are voting, like know that it doesn't just affect you, it affects so many others who might not, um, you know, who, who have been disenfranchised. Yeah, Danae, why are you voting and why did you say yes to this project? Well, I'm voting uh, because, you know, human rights are at stake, honestly. Uh, we've seen how the last four years have been. Uh, that election itself was an experience for me because that honestly was my first time that I got a chance to vote for a president. Um, there were a lot of issues with my voter registration um, when Obama was in office because I was in college at the time and I was unaware of the absentee ballot. So when I went to go vote, I couldn't. So, um, you know, I missed that whole wave. And then I finally was hyped to vote for, you know, this, the last election. And then you saw what happened. So I was pissed. And then, you know, now I feel as though, like, it's important to really, really, really focus on the election and these events. And when it's the time to raise your voice, you know, use your right to vote, you have to do it because you see what happens when you don't or when, you know, you just think, oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, you know, as, as, as long as we're not a, a, an autonomous country, you know, 100%, it's like you have to still kind of like sway the, the government the way that is best for, you know, human rights. So right. that's why I'm voting. And that's why I said yes to the project, honestly, because I am such a, a social commentary type of artist. So it's like, why would I say no? Yeah. You know? Hysterical men, how about you? Uh, yeah. Uh, so um, just like everyone said, voting is one of the biggest tools we have for changing our country. And certain people want so badly for us not to vote. So let's not give them the satisfaction, right? And, um, you know, I'm voting for my child's future, for the future of our world, for all our children's futures. Um, yeah, let's do it. And Kyle, your mural kind of answers the question. You're voting for the ones that you love and want to protect. Um, so maybe, Kyle, why did you say yes to this project? Why was creating that message, doing something in the public space at this time important for you? Um, I knew like why I was voting and I just thought like I have, I have the skill, like I know how to make helpful art. And I think that something like this can help other people that care a lot but are not sure what to do and like direct them to something positive and awesome that can like actually really help change the conditions for people they care about. So I was really excited to get us to do this and I'm, I'm really glad I did it. 
And DK, how about you? Uh, I'm voting because my people have died for this right. My people have fought for this right, for African Americans to be able to vote, um, have been slaughtered for this right. Um, and also I'm fighting for human beings who are being mistreated in a wrong kind of way. So as long as I'm breathing, I'm using my right, I'm using my voice to vote. And that's just that. And you said yes, and you've done many murals. Was, you know, you said yes to this project because you felt passionately yes. about getting that message out? Yeah, absolutely. Like, first of all, I wanted to be down with mural arts. I wanted to be down with streets department. Um, so it, it was a no brainer for me. And the fact that I could get out there and put a message up there to provoke thought um, for my people, minorities, um, children of the ghetto, um, the urban community, to get out there and vote and use their right and use their voice, I was voted. And I'm thankful for the opportunity. And Nathaniel, how about you? Why are you voting and uh, why did you say yes to this project? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, the voting right- uh, Can I also say like, yeah. you said yes to this project after many things happened and we needed an artist at the very last minute. Um, and you jumped in created your design in hours. It was, it was amazing what you did, yeah. So not only did you <laughs> say yes, you. but you said yes and then devoted every, your waking, every waking hour for about a week. I mean, the topic warrants that. Like, uh, you, all of us, every single artist on this panel put their heart into it and put a ton of blood, sweat, and tears into this uh, project. And it just shows how important voting is that we would dedicate our art to it, you know? And I mean, like everyone has already said, it's how the citizens steer the future of our country. So when I heard that I would have an opportunity to do a project, I didn't care what the parameters were, or what the deadlines were, it was gonna happen and my whole heart was gonna be in it. And also a little plug for WHYY, um, we have NPR playing constantly in the studio because it's just um, good information and it's really entertaining. So when I heard I get to partner with them, it was like a double bonus. <laughs> like, oh man, a little yeah. shout to, uh, you know, fresh air and all that that we listen to. Yeah, I mean, I know I'm hosting this through WHOI, but I was really honored too to have them a part of this. Because again, the news we get is so important and they do such great work. Uh, they're great journalists here in the city. Um, Sam, how about you? Why did you say yes to this? And why, are you, why is voting important to you? I'll start with voting is important for me because it's more for the youth. Um, there's a saying that I heard this week. Um, if you want to know the health of a village, you got to look at its children. And when I think about the future of our city, I immediately think about our kids and our young students. And if we can be role models to them students, we can definitely pave the path for them to continue to vote and pass the torch down to other students and keep it going. And I said yes to this project because I can give my students a platform to encourage other young people to do the right thing and vote and be change agents. Um, we have got one question so far. So if you have a question, type it in. Otherwise, we'll wrap up pretty soon. Um, someone asked a question about specifics about how to vote, where to vote, where they can find that sort of information. And just know that you can go to vote.org, vote.org to get answers to all of those questions. Um, you can also, if you're living in Philadelphia, or really wherever you're living, um, you can call your city commissioner's office. They're, they're really helpful. Um, and if they don't pick up, they usually have a local website where you can get specifics there. Um, but vote.org is great. We do have questions. Uh, they're in the question box. Uh, from anonymous attendee, I'm guessing that's just what it says when you're anonymous, that's not the name you typed in. It says, how many days were we in Love Park working uh, they're also beautiful. And how did Candy make the flowers water uh, weatherproof? You know, um, everyone was out there for different amounts of time uh, based on the materials and what they were painting with. DK was out there uh, for a day. I think Candy was out there almost every day. Um, so maybe Candy, well, Candy, how long were you out there? Because um, you were there longer than anyone, I think. And how did you make your flowers uh, weatherproof? Yeah, I was there almost every day. Um, uh, you know, a lot of little 
things, a lot of little details and um, and it, so, so I, I didn't want them to compromise anything. So I was there all the time. Uh, yeah, the, in terms of the, the flowers, they're actually made with synthetic paper. So the kind of stuff, Tyvek, the kind of stuff that you can use to go camping um, and, you know, for tent and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Does anyone else want to jump in about how long they were there painting? I know Hysterical Man, I have no idea because you did yours at home, how long it took you to do your mural. Um, I, I think it took like the full two months or a month and a half of just like 30 minutes here, or a couple hours there, late nights, nap times. Um, uh, it probably, yeah, it took that whole time. And then I was just there for one day installing and it went really well, really easy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and maybe BK, you can mention, um, like, I, you know, when an artist works with spray cans, like it often goes up much quicker because it's just quicker to work that way. Can you talk about how quickly you can create a mural like that um, when it's with a spray can? Yes, um, I think me and Danae had that conversation too about just um, using spray cans helps with the, the coverage of the canvas, um, especially when you're doing something, you know, large and that scale, um, you kind of want to think of time. And if you're a busy working artist, um, you definitely have to get colors up fast. So um, cans are definitely my go-to when it comes to covering large spaces to do murals. Um, yeah, can I jump question. in on this? Jump oh, yeah, in real right. quick. All yeah, I all want to jump ahead. in on this. Uh, one of the misconceptions about the artwork is that it happens all on site. Um, so about half of the work, like literally half of the work happens ahead of time, sometimes more than half in prep and figuring out what you're going to paint and how you're going to paint. And uh, when you get to the site, you just you have a plan and you bust it out. And uh, for me, I had a very tight uh, schedule that I had made for myself that I had to stick to. So it was like three days of design work on my at home and then three days of install work with like an hour by hour schedule. <laughs> so I knew I was gonna get it done by the press conference. Who else said they wanted to jump in, was it? Me, huh? I love this topic because I'm, yeah, I love thinking about this kind of stuff. I just, I agree with Nate. Like I, um, like so much of the work is like all the design work and prep you do ahead of the time. And like my first few murals, I just like went in and like didn't really know what I was doing. And so I was like doing things slowly with this one. I was like, I know I'm a slow painter. I'm a straight up slow painter. I need like to design a mural that I can get done quickly with like really good coverage. And so I was like, Brown has really high coverage. I'm going to make a really giant, awesome head of a person <laughs> and it's going to take up like most of this mural. And so then like once I had painted, I think like, the first things I painted were like the text and like the giant head of the woman. And then like the mural is like there and then all I have to do is like fill in the details. And those are the like things you learn as you keep doing murals. Um, but yeah, it's like really, it's so fun to think about. I was able to bust it out in like a few days and hopefully I'll keep getting faster and faster as I keep learning. And you also did, you know, a lot of artists, I think the most common way to do a mirror like this is projection if you're not using spray. Um, and you didn't use like the square method. So talk about that real quickly if you can. Yes, I, um, Simone Salib, awesome local artist, like taught me how you can take your design and put a grid over the top of your design so that when you, if you grid out the wall that you're putting a mural on and like you over, you project onto the wall, your design with a grid, you know that you're getting the proportions correct, which is a huge problem because it's like when you're just holding a projector and trying to move it to the right place, like you can, it's easy to mess up your design like really fast. Mm. So she taught me that and also loaned me the projector that I used. But yeah, it's like, it's, that's all like nitty gritty. Like, it's fun to think about how to just get it up on the wall. But yeah, that's how I did it. Um, so we have two more questions and I'm gonna to try to wrap up in the next three minutes. One says, was this, was this project supported by the city of Philadelphia? And how do we choose the public space location for this project? Yeah, it was um, a mix of public money um, or it was all public money. Um, yes, um, we got the funding from the city of Philadelphia. Thanks to the city of Philadelphia for that. And then as far as the location, we, um, you know, I've been, we did an iteration of this in 2018 with 10 other artists. Um, we did that for the 2018 midterm, midterm election. 
And um, in thinking about how to make the mural, this project better, we got a lot of feedback that people wanted to see it in the public space. So there were lots of ideas. We could have done one mural in different parts across the city. We could still do that one day because I'd love to do more iterations of this project. But what made the most sense for this year, the funding we had for this year, and the great partnership we developed with Love Park was to do it in Love Park. It's one of the most central parks. It's visited by so many people here in the city who work in the city, who live in the city, but also tourists. It's right across from City Hall where you can cast your ballot or vote early. It just made the most sense to do it at Love Park in this, for this iteration. Uh, and they've been a fantastic partner. Um, uh, okay, one more question, and then I think we'll wrap up. This question says, will there be more to come on these topics from the muralists after the election? Oh, that's a great question. Do you all plan to continue to do work around civic engagement or around voting with your artwork moving forward? Um, or maybe that's something you're just thinking about now with this question. And anyone can take this, whoever. I can answer that. Uh, I, I, like I said, I, I do a lot of social commentary work already. So I'm always talking about it. Um, I might not be talking about voting necessarily, but I'm gonna be talking about the same issues and why it's important to, you know, do things like vote, so, yeah. Yeah, I'll say too, not to speak for everyone, but a lot of the artists here do work um, around various issues, personal, uh, arguably political, or just around different communities. Um, but with this project specifically about being nonpartisan, that was um, you know, an avenue we all had to walk down, create something that was for, for everyone truly, um, and to make it about voting period, making sure that people have the, the assets, the tools to, to share that they are a voter and civically engaged. Um, yeah, does anyone else have an answer to that question? I can answer it. Um... I think for me as an artist, like lately I had the revelation of like, I wanted to start creating um, murals that um, are based around like definitions of words, like uh, injustice, things like that. Um, a lot of people don't know, I worked in mental health uh, 23 plus years um, as a BHW. So I've worked in a lot of the inner city uh, schools with um, children who have behavioral issues, social emotional issues. and I also understand how education is important. Um, so a lot of the, the, the young minority kids in the community don't know what half these words mean. So me as an artist, you know, I, I really want to start going around the city, putting up definition of, definitions of words that they could actually read and understand and say, oh, that's, that's exactly what, that's what that means. And, you know, also again, provoke thought, you know, and hopefully kids can learn um, from the words and the murals that I that I put up, so that that's love just that the hope of mine. I really like that idea. Um, any other final thoughts from folks before we bid adieu? Um, if not, I would just like to thank the artists again for not only being a part of this project, but for coming up with incredible ideas. You know, um, oh, oh, VK, someone says very good idea. I love that. Um, you know, I. You, y'all are watching, it's hard to know what this process looks like. Um, you might think that there's more, you know, play from uh, the partners involved, but really all of these murals are the direct idea of these artists. Um, uh, so I really appreciate the artist's time that they spent in creating these ideas, thinking through them, and then developing into the murals that they became. Uh, thank you again to our partners, WHYY, Love Park, uh, and Mural Arts Philadelphia, for whom this project would not have happened. We really appreciate um, your time and support, uh, and to the audience watching today, and to those who visited Love Park, if you haven't yet, you have until election day to go and see these murals, Instagram them, you know, positive peer pressure is one of the best things you can do, share these murals on social media, text your friend, hey, do you see this mural? Uh, the more people hear that you're voting, and that you're an active voter, uh, and that you, um, you know, the more likely they will be to vote as well, um, so positive peer pressure, and thanks to the audience. Um, if you all have any other questions, you can tweet me at streets, D-E-P-T, that's Streets Department, and I'll try to get you over there. Otherwise, thank you all for tuning in.